Hey, y'all. Let's talk taxes. <sighs> Anybody asleep yet? <laughs> oh, 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 let's add to it. How about prison? <sighs> oh, God. Yeah. That's the reaction. Uh, you know, it's a tough topic and people's heads hit the table, but they think they got their information already. They think they know things and they don't. You liked me on Survivor. You loved hating me or you loved whatever. You loved watching me win and screaming at the TV. So give me a minute or two here to share what happened from that point on. I won the million. I got the check. And then comes problems, <laughs> legally. So nobody's thinking taxes. A year later, your, your accountant is figuring out what it is that should be done with the taxes. It was a little bit complicated. When was the last time you had a million bucks on your tax return? Yeah, me too. <laughs> it's not part of my life. So we looked into how that needed to happen. And one of the first questions was, to whom had what taxes been paid? And that question was because the taxes on the million were required by law, international law, US law, Malaysian law, to have been paid to Malaysia before we left the island. Not when I got the check, you know, months and months later, but before we left the island by CBS or Mark Burnett. His, his uh, company, SEG, Survivor Entertainment Group. Well, that's our question. So who do we reach out to? Everybody, CBS, the IRS. Hey, who paid what to whom so I can do my tax returns for that year? From that point on, I got no response from Mark Burnett. We had, I had a cell phone. We were talking back and forth. Nothing. Communication shut down. CBS actually told my accountants that they wouldn't talk to them about it. Who's ever heard of that? All of a sudden, we're confused. That's interesting. How bizarre. We couldn't figure it out. In hindsight, we know what happened, and you will too, but... Um, no information was available. So we waited. We talked with the IRS, asking them to help us figure this out. And we started that process back and forth with them to, to, to figure out how to do it. I don't know how long that went on. A year, something else. All the while, filing at what we knew, as we knew, when we knew it was supposed to, as best we could. But we knew that the, the taxes on all of the winnings, not just the million, but in each of us, was, were required to have been paid to Malaysia before we left that island. And we couldn't get the amounts that were paid and when and to whom. Out of, out of the blue in this process, the IRS decided, without answering any of those questions eventually, to convert what was a civil inquiry into what had happened to a criminal inquiry. Uh, as you might imagine, I lost my frickin' mind because I'd all along been told by an attorney and by my accountant and by everybody, don't worry about it. Don't worry about it. You reached out to the IRS, it's no problem. There, you know, that there's no, it's not possible for you to be indicted for anything because you're looking into how to figure it out. And you ask them. I learned very, very quickly our system is utterly broken, and I learned over time that it's not just the tax system, the court system, the judges, the probation system, it's all of it. It is an utter mess and truth makes no difference, does not matter. Even having to put up your right hand and say, I swear to tell the truth. Well, that's stupid. You might not know the truth. Why aren't we saying, I swear to be honest. I swear to be open. I swear to tell all I know or I believe to be true. But no, I swear to tell the truth as if you know the damn truth. But people don't like hearing that from me. They think, oh, you know what you're saying, and they get all up in arms. But that's, anyway, our system's broken. Back to the story. As the process unfolded, and we responded to now prosecutors' questions, because this was a criminal inquiry, they, what's called, charged me with information, with attempting to evade taxes. Never attempted to evade a cent in my entire life. I just didn't. I'm happy to pay whatever I owe, and I'm happy to tell you what I made. So I thought they were idiots. I told them so, and I refused to engage in a plea bargain where they wanted me to say I attempted to evade the taxes. Couldn't do it. 
That's just a part of me. I can't stand up and tell a court I attempted to evade taxes to try and get out of punishment when I didn't do anything. So I, I refused. And prosecutors dropped all charges. It was just the attempting to evade charge. Sorry. They dropped the charge. My attorney told me, don't, don't feel good about that. They're still going to do it. I'm, I still couldn't understand what was happening. I was like, great, they dropped it. Eight months later, they came back to me and charged me, not just with attempting to evade taxes, but 10 counts, bank fraud, wire fraud, mail fraud, charity fraud. They thought I was such a cocky prick and they hated me so much. They figured he must be cheating on the charity that I started and all of the money was my own, every penny. And uh, I was facing then with those 10 counts, 43 years or something like that. And they knew I would plea to hell. Stupid, maybe. No way. I can't stand there and tell you I did something I didn't do. I refused to plea. Took it to trial. Crazy. I could go on and on and on about what the trial is and how absurd it is and how the truth is absolutely uninteresting to everybody involved. It's a game. And the, the judge either likes you or doesn't, and he skews things in whichever way he wants. The judge in this case is an absolute unethical bastard who had been uh, prior knowledge of me. He was involved in me. I, he was sanctioned because of how he uh, ruled in, a, in, a, in something against w w when I charged a police department with having sold my son's story to a newspaper. Uh, and he went beyond what he should have done. This judge was sanctioned. Well, the judge hated me so much, he, he sat on this case intentionally to hear it. That's just an aside, and I know I'm getting confused, and here we go again. Back to the story. I got those 10 counts. I decide to take it to trial, and I uh, go to trial, and I'm found guilty of attempting to evade taxes and acquitted of all that other stuff, bank fraud, wire fraud, ch charity fraud, etc., because it was all nonsense. But the only reason I was found guilty of attempting to evade taxes is because that was so confusing that even we couldn't follow it intentionally by prosecutors. Everybody lied. Prosecutors uh, withheld exculpatory information. They um, uh, tried to coerce witnesses. I mean, all kinds of crazy things that you read about happens every frickin' day. Prosecutors should be trying to get at what's true, but instead they move forward in a win-at-all-costs mode that undermines all of us, our society, our systems, all of it. And, and I don't know how people aren't up in arms about it more than they are, other than that they just assume it's not going to be a part of their lives, like I did, until boom, you're in it. Anyway, so I was found guilty of attempting to evade taxes. This lying, unethical judge disliked me so much, he then added uh, perjury because he figured, I, or what he said, he didn't figure it, he knows this was unethical and untrue. He said, I must have lied because the jury found me guilty of that charge. Have you ever heard of this in other cases? No, it's just when they think they can bully you. Well, it's because, why didn't he take into account the, all the other counts of which I was acquitted? That more than weighs against the having been found guilty of the most confusing thing, attempting to evade taxes, which try and explain taxes to the jury, to the prosecutors, to the people. It was crazy. And I watched it unfold and knew it was crazy as it was unfolding. Waiting for that verdict, sitting in the courtroom, having been told, don't worry, They'll give you time to put your life together. Don't worry. They'll, you're not going to be found guilty anyway. You can't. Everything was, was clear. Blah, 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 blah. The jury comes back. I'm found guilty. Locked in handcuffs, uh, leg irons, waist chains, put in a car, blacked out and driven out of state. No time to go back home. No time to put things together. No nothing for attempting to evade taxes and acquitted of all the others. Time to put your life together. Nothing thrown into solitary confinement where I wasn't uh, moved for two and a half weeks or so, sitting in this tiny little confined room where I wrote every single day and watched robins pull um, 
a flock of robins, the only time I'd ever seen robins flock, uh, pull worms out from under the snow, out a little slit in the window, in the wall. That was my first night in prison. This was uh, going to be my life for quite some time. People think, oh, Richard Hatch went to jail for taxes or something, didn't he, for a little while? Yeah, yeah, Elizabeth, one of the uh, survivors, was on The View talking about, yeah, I think he was for a year. I went for more than four years. 51 months they gave me for attempting to evade taxes. Longer than anyone in U.S. history for the amounts that they claimed, which they lied about, that I attempted to evade. They know that the sentencing guidelines change after 300, so they said I was attempting to evade $304,000 worth of taxes so they could give me more time in prison. Think about the people recently, Manafort, etc., who've not just attempted to evade taxes, but evaded them for years with schemes and backwards and forwards and all these other things who were given, what, 18 months in prison or something like that? Some maybe three years. There's no equity. It's absolutely absurd. It's the, the more powerful, the wealthier, the more privileged, the, the less consequent, the fewer consequences you're subjected to. It's, uh, it's an awful, awful, awful system, and I'm uh, grossed out uh, living in a country that treats its citizens that way. Forget me, personally. There are lots of people who are suffering far, far worse. I hardly want to tell you what prison is like and what it does to people because I, I on one hand, don't want you to suffer recognizing how unfairly we treat people and then, worse, what we do to them when, we, when they get there. Uh, but on the other hand, if I don't share some of it, then I feel neglecting a responsibility to communicate reality. Uh, so it's an interesting thing. Here I sat alone in that uh, cell in solitary confinement, uh, never having imagined prison ever being a part of my life because I've not done anything deserving of it. And I, and I just began the process of taking it in and trying to understand what it is that this was all about. Well, like most things, people are involved. So it's a mess. Unlike most things, it damages people in a powerful, powerful, powerful way. It undermines their ability to have a life thereafter. Most everyone who's in uh, prisons will be getting out at some point, uh, just being returned to society. And we in the United States incarcerate more than anyone in any other country in the world. We just do. We're, we're awful. We do it uh, without reason. We do it exaggeratedly. We do it um, to our own detriment. And most people just don't get it. They think, I'll never be affected by that system. You're more affected by it than you could ever imagine. For me, it was crushing. Uh, it was a very, very difficult thing to lose my freedom. And books and thought and writing are what kept me somewhat together while I was there. But I'll tell you, that's a difficult balance. Um, staying in touch with reality and trying to stay sane and somewhat sense, sensible about uh, trying to get some sense of, of what, what's happening and what people are doing to one another, um, almost in the face of reality, because there isn't a lot of sense to it. This idea that we Americans have not even yet decided whether we send people to prison for punishment, that's the punishment, sending them to prison, or are we sending them to prison to be punished? Well, we have, a, there's a, those are very different things. If punishment, if the punishment for what you've done is going to prison, then it isn't necessary to punish people in prison, to punish them, that being there and, and having few guidelines, few rules, but think about our prisons. Our prisons are places that are dangerous. Our prisons are places where all kinds of bad things happen and people are subjected to things that they never would have imagined. And there are people in charge there, people who aren't making much money, who are in positions of power, who 
based on their personalities, interact with us, we prisoners. In a society where we haven't told those guards whether they're there to punish us or whether we're there being punished. So some of the guards are somewhat supportive and do their jobs and and go along and allow us to uh, try and get through our time there. And others just try to make days difficult. And you don't know which half the time because much of the time is based on the, the guards' moods. That's just a part of it. That's just a little tiny piece. Then, if you understood the level of mental illness in prison, prison, because that's who ends up there, a large number of people with mental illness, and the racial disparity, because that's also what ends up there, um, those least able to take care of themselves, those most threatened in society, end up in prison in such huge numbers. I don't know what it was, 80 some, 85% of the 1,500 men that I was in um, Morgantown, West Virginia with were black. Is that because 85% of the population are black criminals? That's horseshit. It's absolutely nonsense. It's objective, obvious racism. It's nuts. If you don't think I'm more dangerous now than I was before I went into prison, because of how much disparity there is in this country and how uh, complicatedly broken all of the systems that people think protect them are, then you're missing a big piece of who I am. Uh, It's nuts. We should be up in arms about it. And I'm sad that we're not. I try to tell who I can. If you don't know who Brian Stevenson is, you're an idiot. And most of you probably don't know who Brian Stevenson is. Some of you do, and for that, I'm grateful. Maybe it's a recent movie. But think about that, and let me take it a step beyond who Brian Stevenson is. He runs the Innocence Project. He has fought to help those who are on death row wrongfully convicted of murders they had nothing to do with um, expose those wrongs. So he's gotten, I don't know how many hundreds of people freed who didn't belong in prison, but were there on life sentences or on death row for having killed somebody that they didn't kill. Think about that tip of the iceberg. Think about, you've got a guy out there putting his resources out there, trying to help the tip of the iceberg. Death row. What went, What goes into a death row conviction? All kinds of resources. Courts and lawyers and, and all kinds of things happen before you actually get to that conviction. Think about everybody below that. Someone who's sentenced to 20 years, to 5 years, to 2 years, to 17 years for limitless number of crimes. To a person in Morgantown, West Virginia, there were about 1,500 of us. I think there was only one other person besides me who claimed his innocence, an Ohio State um, professor. Everyone else, despite what people think, said, no, I, I'm not innocent. I did it. But to a person, all of them talked about how they were abused, how the system was Uh, mistreated them, how uh, evidence was added, how people lied, how the prosecutors bullied them into longer sentences than they should have, and how they've been put back in prison because the system keeps you there uh, in, in, in this insane way where they think that probation is somehow helpful. It's the exact opposite. It's stupid. It's a money game. I don't have time here to go into all those details, but that's, that's what it is, and, and, it, and it's awful. But back to Brian Stevenson. All of those people underneath, the ones convicted of murder who wrongfully, what percentage of them were convicted wrongfully? What con- con- percentage of them are, are taken from their families, their families destroyed, their families paying hundreds and hundreds of dollars for phone calls into the prisons so that these uh, private people can make money? It's the least capable of us, the most vulnerable who are abused this way. Yeah, let's get those, those uh, c- people of color out of our society. Let's get those poorer people out of our society. Let's 
protect those of us with money from the rest of them because we can do that. We can just put them in prison. People don't think about the actual consequences of this disparity. People don't think about the ways in which we are treating these others so badly says so much about who we are. Never mind the effects of that as we all are part of a society in reality. It gets me going, as you might be able to tell, and I can't do it clearly enough in one speech and one um, little blurb here to you, but I hope you get a sense of just how broken the system is. I'm not on here to just go, oh, I'm so innocent. I, got, I'm innocent. I am innocent. And I was abused. And oh, well, I'm also bright. I'm articulate. I'm really well educated. And I'll be fine. I'll get through it. But it's a life sentence, really. I've been convicted of attempting to evade taxes. And people have all kinds of thoughts about what that means without any regard whatsoever for what might be true. They don't care. They know I'm different because they watched Survivor, but I'm also gay and I'm also um, uncomfortable for some people to listen to. And so, you know, it's easier to dislike me because I'm cocky and, uh, ugh, wait a minute, you were naked. All kinds of reasons that people have for, for, for thinking what they want to think about what's true. I'm not worried about that. I'm not concerned about everybody liking me. I don't care. But I am concerned about a country in which most of you don't understand what you're doing to the majority of you. It's awful. It's really awful.